Hello at Bags, it's Joe Plays Games. Welcome to a very special Vigor video. Today we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about Vigor, what to expect from the announcement that the early access period begins on Monday the 30th of July. If you've been dying to play this game, you didn't get a chance to play it in its closed beta, it is going to be available for everyone to play if they buy the Founders Pack on the 30th of July. That's guaranteed. That came through today during the live streams. They've been doing weekly live streams since they've been in their closed beta, showing people some gameplay tips, answering questions, and just generally giving the community some information. And I caught the end of it today. I managed to miss the first hour or so, but I did just catch the last few crucial minutes, and the guys did update me. It is going to be available for everyone. It's going to cost $20. So it is a paid beta or a paid founders pack. It will be free to play. If you don't know, Vigor, the game, is going to be free to play when it launches out of early access in February 2019. Until that point, just like it is with a lot of other games you've probably played with Founders Packs that are free to play, you have to buy it if you want to gain access to it. No idea what the Founders Pack contains just yet. It's very quick news. Literally, they've only just finished the live stream and I'm making this video right away because I want to tell you guys exactly the price and when you can expect to play it if you didn't get a chance to. Also, I did want to give you guys my impressions of it. I'm not here just to promote a game. I do want to talk about the good points, the bad points, and what I think they need to work on in the next few months of early access so come with me let's go talk vigor so if you don't know what vigor is it is a loot shoot and scoot i love that saying big shout out to cyber thompson who gave me that one it's not a battle royale it's not daisy i was misconceivably putting them in them brackets because i just really didn't know enough about the game and not many people did until we got a chance to play it it's a game where you have to upgrade your base that's the main idea the main focus you've got a base that no one else can touch or damage but you can actually upgrade it and when you upgrade it it gives you certain shortcuts it makes getting resources a bit quicker you earn resources from your base over time as well as bringing resources back to your base from playing in these encounters or the maps during the early access periods, there's going to be at least five or six maps to play. They may add more. There's all sorts of things going on with them. When you enter these encounters, the idea is that you go and get loot. You scavenge. You go into houses. You scavenge from cars. You scavenge from little chests inside. You'll find that there's lots of items of furniture that you can open and it will give you resources. The resources vary. It can be something like bullets. It can be something like nails. It can be guns. It can be blueprints. There's all sorts of things you can scavenge. When you're on these maps or on these encounters the main point or the objective is to get the loot crate that falls from the sky it comes in the form of an airdrop a few minutes after the match has started now the matches are matches you can't stay on the map forever as a big radiation cloud will come across the map you can sense what direction it's going to come because it shows on the map a little arrow in each corner where it's going to spread from eventually that radiation cloud will go across the whole entire map and so you have to get your loot and get out alive now obviously other players are going to be able to kill you and they're going to want your loot and that's the main objective to get loot and get out you don't have to be the last person standing you can go through an entire encounter and not come across a single person if you're lucky once you get that loot you need to exit for one of the exit points on the map and that is the objective of the game you choose what kind of loot you want to bring to the game. You want to bring a load of different types of guns, resources, you can do that. There's consumables in the game that will give you health. Basically, every time you're going into one of these encounters, you are bringing a loadout that you think is going to be suitable. So you might want something a bit long range, a bit of a sniper style gun. If it's a snowy map or from distance where you know you're going to be checking on players from a bigger distance. If you want something close up because you know it's quite a big large town and often the loot drop drops nearby, then you're going to want something short range like a shotgun. You can craft weapons as well and you have to get blueprints that unlock the weapons. This is how progress is measured. This is what you're trying to achieve. So all of this is to get it back to your base and store it once you get to your base it's safe no one can take your stuff in the base no one can attack your base your base is your own little private little map just for you they are talking about in the future adding it that they can add friends to come check out your base and i think that would be a really interesting idea they are adding multiplayer eventually as well and they're looking at things like duos and squads as part of that multiplayer but don't expect it too soon 
The encounters can range from anything from 8 to 16 players. You don't know how many players are still left on the map. You may find that everyone's been killed and you're the last person standing, but you won't know as there is no kill feed. This is what makes this game really unique and different. You just never know who's going to pop out and shoot you and take your loot. That's why I love it so much. It brings the best elements what I find of tenseness when you're playing a battle royale game and you're wondering if you're going to make it to the next circle or you're looting somewhere and you hear a sound or you know someone's nearby that tenseness of whether or not someone's going to pop out at you really makes encounters really good and then the urgency from getting to that loot drop it really makes a difference that it's not a battle royale not being the last person alive you can risk it you can go for that loot drop or you may have found a bunch of resources not even going for the main loot drop and you might want to get out and so that tension of whether or not you're going to make it is what really makes this game for me the environments are absolutely stunning. It uses the Unreal Engine 4. Unlike DayZ, which uses their own proprietary engine from Bohemia, this is an Unreal Engine game. So expect some really good visuals, really great characters. In the game as well, the weather systems are fantastic and really the landscapes are amazing. It's set in Norway and the idea is that there has been a nuclear war and Norway is one of the few safer places to be. But obviously you've got outlanders that are going to be going out scavenging and trying to get loot for them themselves. With a free to play game, which it will be in 2019, of course they're going to think of ways to monetize, but there is no advantage in game. Everything you'll be buying will be cosmetic themed. It's not going to affect any type of gameplay. You're not going to be able to buy yourself a cashman of guns and bring it into a game. It's all about cosmetic items and extra rewards, items designed that won't give you an advantage in the game. So why pay $20 for something when it's going to be free to play? Well, you think about all the other Founders games out there. I have to say, I wasn't a big fan of this model. Lots of companies have done it. Fortnite does it with their Save the World, and there's lots of companies doing this nowadays. But in a way, it does mean that you get to form part of what the game is going to be with your feedback. You get a chance to play it early, and you can throw some support. The amount of money that people nowadays pay for V-Bucks or cosmetic items in free-to-play games, it's not really that much of a big deal to get a Founders Pack and give yourself a jump start in the game that you can play and you do get some exclusive rewards. That's what the Founders Pack is going to have, it is going to have some exclusive rewards, cosmetic items, so that's what to expect. So I have come round to the idea that it's okay to do this kind of business model, I, I do think it's probably suitable. It means the developers get a lot of money or a bit of money to develop their game and hopefully it means they can make improvements quicker rather than waiting until maybe the end of early access and then looting and, and sensitizing. It also means that they can make a game rather than just make a system to get money from you. It's all part and parcel free to play. I'm not an idiot and nor should you be. Free to play games are designed to get some money out of you but some of them are definitely taking that approach way before they've even thought about the quality of the game or what the game really is. I don't get that from this game. I don't get that from this the developers, Bohemia, or the Vigor devs, I really feel like they've made a game first and they'll be looking at ways to add cosmetic item sales afterwards and I really love that, I really love the idea, it's a free to play game first with gameplay rather than a system. Now that may change, we don't know for definite how it's all going to work, whether it's going to be loot crate based, whether or not you're going to be able to just buy DLC packs, or whether or not you'll be able to buy individual shop items like Fortnite, and I will keep using that as a good description because it's probably the best one. So many people sink so much money into that. This week alone I've given my son another 20 quid so he can go and buy a bunch of V-Bucks to buy cosmetic items, and a part of me wants to go, no, don't do it. But that's what people want to spend their money on nowadays. They want to look good playing one of their favourite games. Vigor has got that potential. But what does it need to do to make sure it's a successful game even before it's come out of early access? No doubt about it, and the devs know this wholeheartedly from taking feedback, the shooting system is not up to scratch at the moment. It's too slow, it's too unresponsive, and it really is hindering the gameplay. Obviously the more crucial element of the gameplay is the shooting, but it just really feels like you've got potato aim. Bullets are going through the air too slowly, players can kind of jump and skiddle out of the way from getting shot. There really does feel like a bit of a disconnect between the shooting mechanics and everything else in the game. The player movement's really good, you can jump and vault over certain things and that needs a little bit of work. And when you're opening loot crates and going for loot, sometimes the Registration boxes when you're opening stuff isn't necessarily up to scratch either, but that's down to it being quite minimal. I really feel like the game wants to be a minimal approach. It doesn't want loads of menus popping in your face, open this, do this, do that. And I like that idea, but it definitely needs work. The best thing is that the devs do know this. They've already started iterating it during the closed 
beta periods, they did implement a few changes to the shooting to improve it, and they are gonna to continue to do that further. So that is the main biggest one. If you really don't like janky shooting, don't touch Vigor at the moment. I will say that. Don't buy the Founders Pack. Wait a few months and see if it improves and see how it gets on. But if you can take that, if you can take it on, you know, good word that they're working on it to improve it, I think Vigor is a really good game to try. It's not meant to be Fortnite style shooting and I think their aim is really looking at something like PUBG's responsiveness and that meaty feeling that when you fire a shot you're actually connecting with someone and doing damage. Now don't get me wrong, PUBG has got lots of problems with its shooting still and that's out of early access and that's a huge game but I think that the Vigor game style is a little bit more slow, a little bit more deliberate. Your shots are meant to count because of the reduced ammo that you normally have from scavenging on the maps. And I really think that aspect's cool. I like the idea of players' health not being that big and so that you can shoot them and take them down. So it becomes all about whether or not you're gonna risk leaving that house or going over that hill, running out of that cover to go and get some loot. In the future, they've got planned other ways to get different loot. It might not just be the loot drop, there'll be other ways to get stuff. And I'm sure they're going to be taking other avenues into consideration in how to make gameplay a bit more, you know, thrilling for some people. Because some people really don't like the quiet nature of it. You can go through lots of matches, and I've seen it on lots of the forum posts saying that they've gone through matches and not come across one single person. There is ways they've started to do that, to tinker it a little bit. In the game, when you pick up the main loot stuff, it shows up on the mini-map a little bit, or on your compass where that player last was in a flashing sort of way so you can go and hunt down the player who's got the loot it changes like that adding that tweaking that a little bit more to give more you know importance to it i think will add that excitement that feeling that you need to hunt someone down before they leave and i'm really hopeful they'll add brand new game modes to it as well that are, are mixing it maybe like a hardcore mode where where no one's got any sort of weapons and you have to scavenge for yourself and maybe your health is really diminished and it only takes like one shot. That's just a small idea. I think they've got a good few months to get it nailed down. As technically, as the game runs, there are crashes at the moment. Of course, it is an early access game, but I've got to say, it's one of the best early access games I've seen. I mean, who knows? Maybe it's more close to release than I ever thought, but in terms of frame rates, there I have not come across one bit of stuttering in the game. There are a few moments I got stuck on some drawers during a live stream, which I was gutted about because I had a bag for the loot and I was desperate to get back to the exit point. But other than that, really does feel like a polished game they're just working on the systems now and it just really feels nice and tight i really like it i really like the performance so far just the usual sort of bugs and problems that you would encounter in any early access game so in short if you like battle royale games but you don't like the fast paced nature of them sometimes you like the idea of going about it a bit more slowly using your skills maybe using a bit of tactics and wondering what to do vigor is going to be the game for you if you was expecting a day z experience about survival eating food maybe it's not going to be the game for you if you want something to get your teeth into the loot of getting more resources for your base is quite addictive what i definitely want to see them do in the future is have more things for your base they are adding more customizable items for your bases you're going to be able to literally put loads of different ikea furniture in your your base and all sorts and I really like that idea it gives in reason but other reasons as well like keep on with bonuses to your base if you upgrade it that you get more resources or you can even generate more weapons and bullets and stuff over time that would be pretty cool the crafting system and the sort of progression system needs tweaking definitely needs a little bit more added to it at the moment but it has got a nice little meta if you're interested in that and coming from the point of view of a free-to-play game it's definitely going to keep people interested because it's not punishable too much at the moment you have to put the work in to get the resources to upgrade to the next point to make your base better but it's not unobtainable people were getting to the max level in the closed beta which only ran for three weeks or so so there you go that is my thoughts on vigor great game at the moment i am recommending put in your money where your mouth is if you like the gameplay you've seen from other streamers and players chances are you're going to enjoy it go and give it a shout twenty dollars Monday the 30th of July, go and give it a try. I'm going to be covering it, I'm going to be covering updates and news on it, and I will be playing it on a more regular basis. For all the Vigor information you need to know, make sure you've got notifications turned on. You're subscribed, come and join me in Discord where we've got a Vigor channel set up and you can talk to people, and let's go and get out there, scavengers, and get our loot. <laughs>